Good afternoon, friends. My name is Chris Bishop. I'm with Heart First Yoga and Wellness. I'm also a teaching fellow at the Mind Tribe Yoga Lab. And what I have in mind today is a 60 minute um, fire and wood yin practice. So um, we're gonna be targeting um, poses mostly along the, the side planes of the body corresponding with gallbladder meridian. But really my target area is lower back and hips. This is based on um, a request from a couple of my Mind Tribe sisters, Sonia and Renee. So um, we're gonna be going through the side planes of the body to loosen connective tissues around the hip and lower back. I can't promise that this will um, remove or reduce lower back pain, but I do feel really strongly um, that this can help loosen up some of the connect connective tissues there, which lends themselves sometimes toward a positive impact like that. Um, the props that you'll need from the practice today, I think you'll be comfortable more, you'll be more comfortable if you have a yoga mat. And then I like two blankets. I like one spread across my mat. A second one should you use it for padding. Uh, I've got my hugger mugger bolster and I do recommend some kind of a bolster or a cushion from your couch or a couple of pillows from your bed. And it might be nice to have a couple of blocks. We're going to start in a seated position. So find a sustainable seat, something you can maintain for some time. So for most bodies, that's going to mean elevating the hips. So if you think about the pelvis as a bowl of water, what we don't want is that as we sit, that, that bowl of water spilling water out over the back of the bowl, I'd rather have a little water spilling out over the front. So for most bodies, that's going to mean elevating your seat, your, your hips a little bit, um, elevating your seat. So I've chosen to sit on a bolster today. Now, once you're here, um, think about great posture. So float your head over your shoulders, over your hips. Take your chin back toward the wall behind you by about a half inch. So not the whole thing back, but draw it back like you were trying to give yourself a bit of a double chin. And then you can gently fold your hands in your lap. You're welcome also to place your hands on your knees, either palms facing down toward the earth for grounding or palms facing up toward the stars for connection. To begin the practice today, we're gonna to do three communal alms, and then we're gonna start with a bija meditation before we get into the physical asana. So a couple things about the alms and the bija meditation. If you're not accustomed to this, the bija meditation is a guided chakra meditation, and I will invite you to join me in making a sound. Um, but it's chanting. Right, so if there are other people or animals in your house, they may think that you're a little bit strange. Um, my dog, Sabrina, the teenage pit is right here. I think she thinks I'm a little bit strange. That's okay, we'll be strange together. Um, the other thing that I will tell you, when I first did this meditation with my yin teacher, Annie Ao, um, the first two days of our training where we did this meditation, I thought it was the weirdest thing that I'd ever experienced. But after two days, I thought, oh my God, why have I not been doing this every day of my life? So the reason that I tell you that, if your initial um, visceral emotional reaction is that this is strange, that's okay, that's not wrong. You don't have to make yourself wrong. It might be skillful to notice that and greet that with kindness and curiosity. All right, so come back to your seated position. We'll start with a cleansing breath, taking a nice deep inhale. And then open your mouth, let that all go. And for the next three breaths, I'm gonna cue for an inhale. You can choose to join me for an OM, which means you can choose not to OM as well. Inhale. When you chant OM, imagine that you are everywhere. Inhale. Shift your focus and your attention to your Ajna chakra, the point between your eyebrows. Inhale. Back to a comfortable, natural breath. 
So in this Bija meditation, this guided chakra meditation, I'm going to guide you through the chakras. And as I do so, I'm going to ask you to focus your attention on particular points in your body. I will give you landmarks. I'm going to ask you to visualize a color. And I'm going to ask you to join me in making a sound. Now, for the first two chakras, I will demo first, and then I'll cue for all together. And if you choose to join me for the Bijan meditation, you can do so at that time. After the first two chakras, once you know the pattern, all you have to know is the sound. So I won't be demoing. I'll simply be inviting you to join me. You can choose to chant with me, or you can choose not to. Close down your eyes. You could choose to keep them open with a soft gaze. And shift your attention to your root chakra, the Muladhara chakra. So think about the base of your pelvic floor. Visualize the color red. The sound is Lam, L-A-M. Inhale. Lam, 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 Lam. Lam, 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 Lam. All together. Lam, 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 Lam. Lam, 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 Lam. When your Muladhara chakra is open and balanced, you will feel grounded, in control, and at ease. Shift your focus up to your lower abdominal area, the Svadhisthana chakra. Visualize the color orange, the sound is VAM, V-A-M. VAM, 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 VAM. VAM, 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 VAM. All together. Vam 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 When your Svadhatana chakra is open, you will experience intimacy and love fully and live life as your most authentic self. Focus up to a point about two inches above your navel. Your Manipura chakra. Visualize the color yellow. The sound is Ram. R A M. All together. Ram 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 Manipura chakra is balanced. You have agency over your personal power and decision making. Now bring your attention to your heart, specifically the right side of your heart. Visualize an area about the size of your thumb. This is your Anahata chakra. Visualize the color green. The sound is Yam. Y A M. All together. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. Anahata chakra is open and balanced. You can feel love and compassion for beings outside of your immediate family and pets. Bring your focus up to your throat. Vishuddhi chakra. Visualize the color sky blue. The sound is hum. H A M. All together. Hum, 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 hum. Hum, 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 hum. When your Vishuddhi chakra is open and balanced, you could skillfully. Express your own truth. 
take your focus up to your Ajna chakra, the point between your eyebrows, where the bridge of your nose meets your forehead. This is the Ajna chakra. Visualize the color indigo. The sound is Om. All together. Om, 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 Om. Om, 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 Om. When your Ajna chakra is balanced, your intuition will be clear and easy for you to understand. Now focus on the crown of your head, in the area just above the crown of your head. Your Sahasrana chakra, the chakra of a thousand petals. Imagine that your body and head are full of a pulsating white light. And the sound is a single ohm. The inhale. Focus on your seven chakras. Imagine that everything is in alignment. Then you can gently blink your eyes open. And the first shape of our yin practice today is going to be banana asana. Now, I recommend setting up straight on your mat. I'm going to set off at a bit of an angle just for demonstration purposes. But it might be nice first to take a full body stretch. So reach your arms all the way up over your head, really lengthen your whole body out. And now start walking your right foot over to the right, maybe even coming all the way off the right hand edge of your mat. And then walk your hands over to the right as well. And again, the hands may come all the way up. Now note, when your shoulders and your, your left shoulder and your left hip start to lift up off the earth, that is probably far enough. So bear in mind that in this yin practice, what we are asked to do is to sit with our discomfort. Right? So if we are to successfully affect change in that connective tissue, it probably shouldn't be comfortable. That being said, it should also not be painful. So this has been described by yin teachers over time as a dull achiness, diffuse pressure, But it might be useful to think of this on a numerical scale. So if you imagine a, a level of sensation from zero, where you feel nothing, to 10, which would be an excruciating pain, you could not bear it, you would be compelled to move. Start with a level that's at least a four, but not more than a six. And part way through each shape, I will offer you some options where if your body has opened up more space, you can come more deeply into the shape. What I typically find with the yin shapes, if I start by exercising a bit of restraint, often I can open up some space in my body. But if I get greedy and I go for too much sensation, like a level of sensation that would be fine, I could bear during a vinyasa practice. After I've set for that length of time, um, that level of seven or an eight can quickly spike up to a 10. Right, but if I start with some restraint, that numerical value of four to six, often my body asks after a time, I open up more space, it asks for more sensation. Speaking of which, check in with your body. Notice the level of sensation you have right now. You could change nothing. If you're in that range of four to six, you're exactly where you need to be. So you could change nothing. Option is you could walk your right leg further out to the right. You could pick up your left foot, cross your left ankle over your right. You could also Make a little loop with the middle finger and the thumb in your right hand, wrap that around your left wrist, and draw that left shoulder a little bit further over to the right. Once again, once your shoulder and your hips start to lift up off the earth, that is plenty far enough. But feel for a lengthening along the whole left plane of the body, from down 
to your left heel all the way up to the tip of the pinky finger in your left hand. Feel for lengthening and sp creating space. You can release your left wrist, uncross your left ankle over your right, come back to center. Take a moment here, lengthen out again. Notice the difference between the feelings of sensation on the left or the right plane of your body. And then we'll take the other side. Walk your feet over to the left. Left foot again, maybe comes all the way off your mat. Walk your arms off to the left as well. So create a banana shape or a smile type shape with your body. So sometimes people that are new to yin yoga who come to us from a vinyasa tradition are a little bit alarmed by the difference in the instructions, both the tone and the nature of the instructions. Because if you come from a vinyasa background where we give alignment cues that are rigid and precise, then what we do in the yin practice tends to seem a little bit loosey-goosey. And if you understand that the reason that we give those rigid alignment cues in vinyasa is to protect ourselves from injury. A lot of people come to a yin practice when they're new to the practice, they're worried about injuries. Right, but that kind of rigid muscular alignment, flex your toes back towards your face, press through your heels. The things that we say like that are necessary because we're moving quickly through dynamic movement and we need that level of muscular engagement to protect ourselves. When we come to a yin practice, um, it is skill for us skill for us skillful for us to learn and to start to recognize that the intention of the practice is very different here in this yin practice our goal is to get within our target range of sensation and then to allow time and gravity to draw the connective tissues primarily fascia down toward the earth so the same rigid alignment cues that in a vinyasa practice are critically important here become counterproductive. But at this point, check in with your body. Notice the level of sensation you have right now. You can change nothing. You can take your hands, your feet further over to the left, cross your right ankle over your left, make a little loop with your left hand wrapping around your right wrist. And come deeper into that banana shape. So one other thing I failed to mention, um, there's no special breath that's required in the yin practice. Just a comfortable, natural breath will be just fine. But if you are accustomed to uh, an ujjayi breath, a victorious breath from your vinyasa practice, for myself, I find this can be a very nice vocal point for my attention. So a light ujjayi breath is fine. Here is the other thing. If you come back to principles of mindfulness, when we find anchors to the present moment, usually we're looking for the most provocative sensation. And when we get caught up in our thoughts or when we get swept up in emotions, the, the technique is to notice that and to bring our attention, shift our attention back to this, that most provocative sensation. If we're sitting at a level of discomfort, especially if it's up in the higher range of the recommended a five or a six, very often that can also be a very nice focal point for the attention. If you've made a loop with the fingers in your left hand, you can release your right wrist 
uncross your right ankle from over your left, come back to center, really stretch yourself out again. And then put a bend in your knees, place the soles of your feet down on the mat, roll off to either side. And then press yourself up any way you want to get there to the top edge of your mat. We're going to take deer pose. And we're going to take the option for a twisted deer fairly soon. So I would have your bolster close by. Mine is going to be at about a 45 degree angle, close to the top right hand edge of my mat. Now here, right shin is parallel to the top edge of your mat. Left shin is parallel with the left edge of your mat. Right, that right hand, just hold your torso up. For some bodies, you're gonna easily be able to balance your head and your shoulders over your hips. Mine tend to skew over to the right a little bit, that's okay. But just prop yourself up. And initially, what I'd like you to feel for is a sense of gravity drawing your pelvis and your hips down toward the earth. Now your left hip cannot be level with your right hip right now, so don't worry about that if that's the case. But see if you can relax and allow gravity to draw your pelvis and your hips down toward the earth. Right, feel for an internal rotation of that left thigh as gravity draws that hip down toward the earth, an external rotation of your right thigh. Is, gra is through the earth, the rest of, your, rest of your body weight pressing into it, rotate that thigh external. So typically here, the most provocative sensation is on the inside of the legs. I think about kidney meridian typically when I think deer pose. But for this twisted deer in a moment, you'll have the option to stay right here. But I'm gonna offer you something that I think will help you get more into the lower back. All right, so you could check in with your body right now. Notice the level of sensation that you have. You could change nothing, or you could start to walk your hands over to the right. Again, I'm going to slide my bolster over with me and you can lower yourself down onto forearms or I'm going to slide all the way back so that my torso and the side of my head come down onto this bolster. You can also, if the bolster's not enough cushion between you and the earth, you can either place blocks under your bolster or a block between your bolster and your body. And then once you're here, try to relax everything, but feel still for that the heaviness, the weight of your hips and your pelvis drawing down toward the earth. And notice where the change in sensation when we were in the regular upright deer pose, right? A conventional deer, eventually we would fold over that front shin, in this case, the right shin. But in this twisted deer, notice where the sensation has changed, right? My most provocative sensation here is not on the inside of my legs. to that QL mus muscle in the left-hand side of my back. And I'm also feeling it, I think, into the piriformis on the right side of my back. And then just relax. See if you can allow time and gravity to draw your connective tissues down toward the earth. You can start to walk your hands back up under you, supporting yourself. And then to change sides, I'm gonna bring my left leg forward. 
so that my left shin becomes parallel to the top edge of my mat. I'm going to stage my bolster right over here to the left. And then I'm going to sit back and take that right shin back behind me so the right shin is also um, parallel to the right hand edge of my mat. And now that left hand under my left shoulder is just going to keep me propped up. Again, feel for a lengthening. And gravity drawing your pelvis, your hips down toward the earth. External rotation of the left thigh now, internal rotation of the right thigh. My yin teacher, Annie Ao, likens the manner into which we would skillfully get into a very hot bathtub as the same way as we get into a yin shape. So if the bathtub is really hot, you wouldn't just plop your whole body down. You'd burn yourself. It would be uncomfortable. Rather, if you place the big toe of your left foot in first, maybe even pull it, withdraw it, and reapply it several times. But eventually that big toe acclimates, and then the sole of your foot, the heel, the leg, the other leg, and eventually a whole body is comfortably, safely immersed in this very hot bath. We skillfully get into a yin shape in the exact same way. Rather than going in at a level of sensation that we won't be able to sustain, because in the yin practice, we hold those, these poses for a long time, then our task, the job is for us um, to go in with some level of restraint, but monitor, notice when we've created more space in our body, and either honor that by um, choosing not to go any deeper into the pose, or by deliberately adding sensation now speaking of which check in with your body you can stay right here there's nothing wrong with where you are right now or you can walk your hands out to the left and then encroach in sabrina the teenage pit space a little bit and then walk yourself down perhaps onto forearms or bring your whole torso in the left hand side of your head down onto the bolster again option to place a block between um, your bolster and your body And here, notice if you're holding any tension. So once you get into the shape, there really should be no muscular engagement required to maintain the shape. So feel for a lengthening along the lower back and the sides. And feel gravity continue to draw your pelvis and your hips down toward the earth. That's the sensation that we're seeking here. have thoughts or emotions rise up you're not doing it wrong you're not doing it wrong take that language out of your vernacular notice that can you notice it with kindness and compassion maybe gently place a label on that so the thought rises up you notice it what your mind gently you gently label it with your mind is thinking and you don't have to push it away we just ask to not attach to it and then see what that opens up for you. Come back to the point of most provocative sensation. So again, in this yin shape, um, I have plenty of sensations from which to choose, right? But in the absence of that, we always have the sensation of our breath. But we can notice all the places where the earth is pressing back up into our body in whatever way we're coming into contact. yourself back up 
take all the time you need because where we're going here is any resting shape on your belly. So some good options. You can take a belly shavasana with your hands down by your waist, palms facing the sky, resting one cheek or the other on the mat. You can take a half frog, goal posting the arms out to the side, and then lifting the knee on the same side that your chin is turned. My friend Sarah calls this hug the earth pose, which is another lovely name for it. Right, so if you've chosen to lift one knee in this half frog or hug the earth pose, lower that lifted knee back in line with your other knee. Place your hands under your shoulders. Press yourself up. And where we're going, it's a little bit unconventional in the cueing, but take your left forearm parallel with the left hand as your mat. Left shoulder floats over your left elbow. A bend in your right knee. Reach your left hand back. Catch that right foot and then take that down to the earth. Now step the left leg forward. Now your left leg maybe will come all the way to the front edge of your mat. Mine does not, that's okay. And then once you're here, notice I'm really slumping into that right shoulder. How often do we say that in yoga? Go ahead and slump into that shoulder. That's not typical, but here that's okay. Now feel for a canopy effect with the whole right plane of the body. So your whole rib cage is acting like um, the canopy on a tent in between the supports. So it's draping down toward the earth. And that your right ear even could come down and rest on your right shoulder. Or you can shift your gaze, your chin down toward the earth here. Continue to feel for that sense of lengthening along the right plane of your body. And start to allow that left shoulder to fold back toward the earth behind you. Now, it may not be much of a, a physical movement at all. For me, it's very, very subtle. But maybe an energetic shift is starting to release that left shoulder down. And we'll have an opportunity here in a, in a couple of minutes to do more with that. stay right here but check in with your body notice the level of sensation there's nothing wrong with where we are if you wanted to add more sensation take that left hand place it in front of your torso slide your right forearm forward along the right edge of your mat reach your left hand back grab that right foot again ground your right foot ground your head and allow gravity to draw that left shoulder further back toward the earth behind you So I don't have a whole bunch of mobility in my, my chest, my neck, and my torso, right? I see this in studio. I see some bodies are in shapes more like mine, but I also see people very, very frequently, their left shoulder comes all the way down to the earth. They look super relaxed. 
right? For me, this feels really good, but it's not a relaxing sensation. So I'm going to start to shift you out of this. So first things first, release that left foot, put a bend in your right knee, bring your knees back together, and then roll onto your back. And this is going to be the starting position for the two neck shape. So the first one, wrap your right knee over your left. So eagle legs, walk your hips over to the right. Now, rather than going into a twist, be patient with me. We'll get there. But first, lift your right knee up as if you're trying to touch your chest. Take your left hand and place it on your right shin just below the knee, and then use that hand to apply gentle traction, drawing that right knee down towards your left shoulder. Right, so there's certainly a young element in this shape as we're using a muscular engagement um, of the, the left shoulder, left arm, left hand, to draw that right knee down towards your left shoulder. But everything else can relax. So flex feet here, not helpful, not necessary. You can let that go. In this nautilus pose, feel for a lengthening along the outside of the right thigh, so the IT band, but also at a high enough level of sensation. So if you get closer to the six on that scale from four to six, you should be able to feel this all the way into the lower back, the piriformis muscle. Because of that young element, we're going to be in this Nautilus pose for a shorter amount of time relative to the other yin poses in our practice today. So for that reason, I'm not gonna cue you to go deeper into the shape, but anytime that you feel some space has opened up within the target area, feel free to apply more pressure with your left hand, drawing your right knee down towards your chest. Now, I don't typically do this, but I've also seen yogis in class take their right hand up to meet their left, to traction a little bit more pressure. For me, just that one hand, I can get all the sensation I could possibly want. Start to release 
your right shin, lower your left foot down to the earth. Now, if your hips are still engaged over to the right, start to drop your knees to the left. And in a vinyasa format of class, we would give a cue to take your gaze out over the fingers of your right hand. But I'd actually rather, you, we will get, at that length of time that we're gonna hold this, we risk getting arterial compression in the neck by turning the head. So leave your gaze up toward the stars. The other thing here, those eagle legs here, that can be way too much sensation. So I will tell you on this side, I'm okay. On the other side, I had a hip replacement six months ago. It doesn't feel good for me to do it this way. So I will unwrap the legs to reduce the sensation. You could also place a block between your inner thighs, or you could place a bolster between your left thigh and the arm. And then once you're in this twisted root shape, can you just relax as gravity draws your knees down toward the earth? And feel again for lengthening at your lower back and hips. Notice what's the effect, what's the sensation that that twisting movement is giving you here. So check in with your body. Notice the level of sensation you have right now. And again, if you're in that range from four to six, change nothing. You're already exactly where you need to be. If you've opened up space, a couple of options to add sensation, you could straighten your right leg, take the sole of your right foot further over to your left. That's too much sensation for me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a bend in my left knee. I'm gonna reach my right arm down and take a grip on the top of that left foot and then ground both my left knee and my right shoulder down onto the earth and cat pulling its tail. Right, now these two options to add sensation, friends, I'll also mention these are not mutually exclusive. You could straighten the top leg, the right leg, and also take cat pulling its tail with your left leg and right arm. The other thing I'll mention here, friends, these options that I mentioned, they are not value-laden. So one is not better than any other. They're just options that are available for um, choosing the level of sensation that's appropriate in your body right now. And also note that if you, one level of sensation is appropriate for one side of your body and it's too much sensation on the other side of your body, nothing to worry about, friends. I promise you, super normal. If you've chosen to straighten that right leg, put a bend in the knee. If your cat's pulling its tail, release it. Draw your knees up to center, and then roll off onto either side. Press yourself up, and we're gonna take this three, this whole, entire three pose series on the other side. So to start, left forearm is parallel with the left hand edge of your mat. Put a bend in your right knee, reach your, your left knee rather, reach your right hand back, catch the top of that foot, walk, your right foot forward toward the top edge of your mat. Again, mine doesn't come to the top edge of my mat. Yours might. And then once you've found that alignment, shoulder floating over your elbow, you can really let everything go. 
and that left shoulder may come up towards your left ear, that's okay. Feel for a lengthening along the whole left plane of the body. Right, so when you feel your left rib cage in that sense of lengthening, I guess two metaphors that I'll offer. The first, if you imagine a beam of beautiful green light from your heart, your spiritual heart that's spreading out through your body cavity, once you're in this shape, the beams start to increase and make a larger impact between the ribs on your left-hand side of your body. The other thing is, if you've ever seen a show at the Cynthia Woods Mitchell Pavilion in the Woodlands, you look up overhead, so notice you're there in the summertime, you're there to watch a show. You look up overhead, look at the shape of those canopies are making between the wooden supports, and now make that same shape with your ribs. Maybe lower that left ear down towards your left shoulder, or shift your gaze down toward the earth, completely relaxed in the neck. Now gravity starts to fold your right shoulder back down toward the earth behind you. And just like the other side, in a moment here, we're gonna have an opportunity to do a little bit more with that. So maybe stay right here. Maybe take your right hand in front of your torso, slide your left forearm forward, regrip that left foot in your right hand, rest your head down on the earth, let gravity draw your right shoulder back and down behind you. And your whole left leg is now in contact with the earth. So if you've caught that left foot in your right hand, release that, put a bend back in your right leg, knees come together, roll up onto your back, and then cross your left knee over your right, walk your hips over to the left, lift your knees up again like you were trying to touch your, your, chin, your chin with your knees, and then right hand wraps around the left shin just above the knee, gently traction that left knee down towards your right shoulder. Maybe to the point where you get enough sensation that you feel it down into the piriformis in your lower back. That's really the target of this shape, is I'm trying to get into the piriformis muscle. Right? But often first we, we have to um, put the sensation in that IT band first. And then just like the other side, Relative to the other yin shapes we've taken today, we're not going to be here a terribly long amount of time. So um, 
anytime that you've opened up more space and you're ready, traction that left knee closer down towards your right shoulder to increase the sensation. Start to release your left shin, lower your feet down to the earth. Now, again, I'm gonna unwrap my left knee over my right. It's too much sensation otherwise, but you can have wrapped or unwrapped. Shift your hips over to the left, drop your knees off to the right, lead your gaze up toward the heavens. Right, and again, if, you're, if you've unwrapped the legs and you're still getting a level of sensation that's higher than that six on the scale of zero to 10, um, place either a bolster under your right thigh or a block in between your inner thighs. For probably two or three months after my, um, my hip replacement, I could do supine twist and vinyasa or twisted root in yin, but I could only do it with a bolster between my knees. Right? And I say only, I was grateful to be able to practice it all. So just keep in mind that those are all tools to help you adjust the sensation to make it appropriate for your body. All right, what's the message that we're sending to the universe by using props? Right, I feel like the message is I'm open to support. At least that's what one of my early yin teachers said. I think there's a lot of wisdom there. Can we just relax and trust that the props will support us? So no muscular engagement necessary to maintain this shape. So the job here that needs to be done is going to be done by gravity. So our part, can you just relax and allow gravity to draw your knees down toward the earth? Option here, if you choose, you could straighten through that left leg. Or you could put a, more of a bend in your right knee, reach your left hand down and Take a grip on either your right ankle or the top of your right foot, find cat pulling its tail. I'm not gonna choose to do that here on this side, but it's an option that's available to you if you want it. A lot of times we feel, regardless of the close relationships and the people in our lives who love us, we spend a lot of time feeling completely alone. We often have a story in our head about how we have to do it all, but we're not allowing anybody else to get close enough to help or to support us. So if we can't allow our props to support us in our yoga practice, how can we allow the people we love in our lives to help us when we need support in our lives? 
when we need something to help us adjust the sensation in our lives to an appropriate level. All right, so if your cat's pulling its tail or you straightened your left leg, put those back to reset, draw your knees up to center, and then make your way into the final resting shape of your practice. I'm gonna ask you to try this one today. If you don't like it, try it for a minute and then dismiss it. But leave a bend in your knees, feet on your mat, but out nice and wide so the outside edges of your mat. Let gravity draw your knees in together to rest on one another. Maybe hands, palms down at the bottom of your rib cage. So this is called a constructive rest pose. What I like about this is it uses gravity to, to relax the psoas. So it sort of tricks the psoas into relaxing. But it also, with the knees at this orientation, it puts the ball of the hips right in the center of the socket. So there's no pinching and gripping on either side. So try this for me. If you don't like it, that's okay. Go to a conventional Shavasana. But find a shape that allows you to fully relax. You have walked the warrior's path for the last hour. Here in this shape, the only thing that we're asked to do is to surrender to our mouth. going to begin to shift you out of your final resting shape. But before you change anything, know that you are empowered and have my full support to change nothing. And close out the practice in your final resting shape. And maybe even take your final resting shape well beyond the time um, where this practice itself ends. But you also have the option now to start to draw some deeper breaths and bring your body back to life after this time of rest. You could start to reanimate your body by making very small movements, maybe wiggling your fingers or your toes, or gently drawing your chin from shoulder to shoulder. Option to take some larger movements now, maybe rotating your hands at the wrists, your feet at the ankles, or if a full body stretch would feel good, you could reach your arms all the way up overhead, point your toes reach your legs forward, maybe well past the top edge of your mat, maybe the center of your back even lifts up off the mat. And then one leg at a time, draw your knees into your chest, give yourself a nice squeeze. Recognize and honor yourself for your devotion 
to your practice, your commitment to your practice, your courage for rolling out your, out your mat today and the hard work that you put in. And then roll over onto either side into a simple fetal position, a child's sleeping pose. If you've gotten into your head at all, drop back down into your body and become present to the potential for any changes in your body that this practice has helped you bring about. And then honor yourself for making those changes. Press yourself up into a seated position with your legs crossed, your eyes either closed or open with a soft gaze, thumbs at your sternum, hands at heart center, or maybe both hands covering your heart. Thank you, sisters and brothers. I'm always honored when you trust me with your bodies, your mind, and your spirit. Draw your thumbs up to your Ajna chakra, the point between your eyebrows. The spark of the divine in me recognizes, honors, and bows down before the spark of the divine in each of you. Namaste. Beautiful work, friends. I hope you have an amazing day and an amazing week, and I'll be back with you with another practice soon.